to our final installment for the year 2020 for our Sunday morning online worship video, something that we really never thought that that we'd be doing really uh, for this duration, but we've enjoyed it and we plan to continue doing this into the new year. I want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for choosing to watch. If you've been watching the whole time, we really um, appreciate you. My name is Daniel Kirkendall. I'm the Associate Minister at Forsyth Church of Christ, and this is John Dobbs, the pulpit minister, and we're going to switch roles today. I'll be preaching today, and as I, as I, I, I deliver a sermon, it's not something I do every week. Um, I feel good about it, but I want to encourage you to give me some encouragement. Use the like button, use the comment button, use the share button, engage with one another. I know a lot of us have um, not gotten out as much as we usually have. Some of us have, some of y'all haven't gotten out very much at all. And so we want everyone who's watching to feel like they are a part of what's going on. And really the best way to do that virtually is to use that comment section below the, below the video or somewhere located around the video and let everyone else know that you're watching. Let us know that you're watching. If you have a comment, a thought, an amen, feel free to write it in there. Exactly right. And that doesn't matter which area you're watching. You can be watching on Facebook or on YouTube. There are places for comments there, places to share at both places. And so uh, no matter where you're seeing this right now, you have opportunity to help us get the word out. And we appreciate when you do that. Uh, also, another place where you can be on the internet, although try not to go right this moment, yeah. is facoc.org, where you can contact us through a communications tab subscribe to emails, 
uh, look around and see what other information is there. We'd like for you, especially if you're not a member at Forsyth, we'd like for you to get to know us. And there's a place there to kind of look around and, and get a, an idea of who we are. So I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, you can leave prayer requests uh, in that place as well. And we'd love to pray for you and, and would be honored if you'd let us pray for you. Uh, I do want to encourage you that we are not only on Facebook, but also on YouTube. I, I know I mentioned that a minute ago, but sometimes that gets overlooked. And later, it's easier to find those videos on YouTube mm -hmm. than it is in the Facebook world where things are moved around a lot, it seems like. Yeah, that's a good point. Things can get buried on Facebook, but YouTube, you can just go look at the, the videos. So like I mentioned, this is our, uh, sun, our online version of what we're doing uh, Sunday mornings at Forsyth. We are meeting in person, following proper protocols, wearing masks to and from our seats. Um, but we are meeting at 2101 Forsyth Avenue here in Monroe, Louisiana, and you are welcome to, to join us, to, um, uh, to attend. Uh, we'd love to have you. We're singing and doing all the things that we would normally do uh, at, at uh, you know, if, if there wasn't a, a, a pandemic. We are not meeting on Wednesday nights right now, however. We are working on plans to make that happen. Hopefully, um, that will be sooner uh, rather than later. So this morning we're going to look at a text in scripture, and but before we get into that, we're going to watch a short video to kind of uh, open up um, our, our minds to, to the lesson. Well, so here we are. It's the week between Christmas and, and New Year's. And for some reason, I think for the past eight years, I've always received this Sunday, the last Sunday of the year, each year. And, and, and I like preaching um, on this day. But this week is such a weird week in the year. It's kind of a, a dead week in terms of, of real productivity. We're just kind of reviving from, from the Christmas dash. And we're preparing to turn our, our calendar to the next year, 2021. And one thing that we know while we do that, though, is that once we do that, our routine is going to go uh, back to normal. And so in preparing for this this morning, I said, you know what, I can go and just reflect on 2020 a little bit. But then I decided that I did not want to do that at all. <laughs> We're all hoping a new year will bring about some, some type of change, uh, an improvement in our condition, the situation, the world around us. And I don't know whether that happens or, or doesn't happen 
uh, doesn't happen the way that you imagine it, but I do know that hope can only be found in one place. And so there's a story in Scripture um, that can help us deal with what we have experienced and help us face whatever comes our way. And we're going to read that passage in, in just a moment, but before we do, I have a quick question to ask you. And you can answer in the comment section uh, below if, you, if, if you're willing to. So let's say you're driving down the road and you come to a red light behind this car and, and as you're sitting there, the light turns green and, and the person in front of you doesn't notice it and they just kind of sit there for about two or, or three seconds. What do you do when that happens? I'm talking about just a couple of seconds. What do you do? Do you beat the horn? Do you get angry? Do you almost lose your religion by name calling and, and condemning people or other things like that? What about when you go to the grocery store and there's been this long line and, and you're standing there and the line's kind of moving through. The person in front of you has like two or three items and they get up there and they're checking out and they say, oh, I, I forgot something. I'll be right back. How do you respond when you're sitting there and they just take off beside you and, and you're left just sitting there waiting? I know waiting can be very difficult and it can cause us to be angry or, or resentful or... or are a number of, of uh, emotions that we don't intend for it to. Um, we have expectations of how and when things should unfold. And if that does not necessarily fit into our schedule, um, then we react immediately, a lot of times in, in negative ways. You know, the Christmas, Christmas just got over with. And for children, Christmas is one of those things. It's Waiting on Christmas morning is just brutal for, for kids. Right after Thanksgiving, it, it, it begins. So at my house, my kids between Thanksgiving and Christmas, once we get their stockings hung, every time they walk by their stocking, they, they feel it. They check how many presents are in there. You know, they feel how, how heavy they are. They count the presents under the tree, sort them and, and count them. And, you know, they're anticipating this, this Christmas morning. They look at their Santa's list and they, they revise that a number of, of times. And they're just waiting for that moment where they can run in to the living room and look under the tree and just start ripping open the presents. It's so overpowering that my own kids resort to asking us if they can open early Christmas presents throughout the month of December. And we always respond with, not right now, just wait and be patient, it's all going to be worth it. Not right now, just wait and be patient and it's all going to be worth it. The text today is in Luke chapter 2. And as I read over the encounter presented to us here, my mind goes to what I tell my own children not right now, just wait, be patient, it's all going to be worth it. And I know that's difficult for them to do for like a whole month. It's difficult for me to do when I'm stuck behind someone at a red light or in the line at the grocery store, whether it's a couple seconds or a couple minutes. I read the story of Simeon and Anna in Luke chapter 2, and I'm ashamed at my own impatience after seeing their perseverance and trust in the Lord. So if you have your Bible with me, we're going to turn to Luke chapter 2. We're going to begin in verse 22, and we're going to read through verse 40. This is the story of Jesus being presented at the temple and encountering Simeon and Anna. <clears throat> when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that, Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and he praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will, will, will pierce your own soul too. There is also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, 
of the tribe of Asher. She was very old, and she had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. So I look at the the patience of, of Simeon and Anna, and that's not something that I personally possess right now. I can't imagine possessing that type of patient patience. I know we wait on things for, for years, you know, sometimes, but while we wait on things, we can occupy ourselves elsewhere. But if you notice that Simeon and Anna were at, at the temple because, well, they were always at the temple, we are only given a very brief look into their lives. Simeon is described as righteous and devout and filled with the Spirit. Anna is presented as a prophetess and described as a, an old widow. And if you look at the numbers in the text, many scholars believe that Anna was probably about 105 years old. The text says she never left the temple when she worshipped day and night. Simeon and Anna had committed their life to God through waiting and worship. So I'm here today to propose that the act of waiting and the resolve to worship are two areas of our lives that we can intentionally improve upon to make sure that whatever happens, whether it's in 2020 or 2021 or 2050, we're going to be able to see God work through the good and the bad so that we can hold on to the hope that brings us together right now in this video. Waiting on God is very challenging, even for uh, some of the most prominent figures in, in Scripture. I think about Moses, the life of Moses. Moses was a guy who, who led Israel while they were in captivity, and as they exited slavery, he, brought, he ushered in the ten plagues through the power of God. He, he walked the Israelites as they fled from the army of Egypt. He, he led them across dry, dry ground while God held the water back on the Red Sea, and then once they made it safely, the Egyptians tried to cross, and, and it collapsed upon them. And they get across, and Moses helps them get food and water and the things they need when they're in the desert. And then as they make their way to Mount Sinai for the Ten Commandments, Moses ascends the mountain, and he wasn't gone very long. And the people became impatient and began to make idols, worshiping other gods. I think about Abraham, who, who had a visit from an angel and received this promise from God about a child who was going to be born. And it was going to fulfill the covenant that they had made. And instead of waiting on that, Abraham and Sarah came up with a plot to try to create their own child of promise through Abraham's handmaid. See, Moses and Abraham are two very prominent figures in Scripture, and we see their impatience come forth here. It's an act of discipline waiting on the Lord is. It's something that you do. It's not something that you refrain from. Simeon would go to the temple regularly. Anna never left the temple, and she worshipped constantly. It's one of those fundamental disciplines that I, I believe is a fundamental discipline of godliness. And waiting on the Lord can replace a lot of things in our life that cause problems. It can replace fear, worry, hopelessness, sadness, anxiety, hastiness, impatience, and it, and it can prevent the emotional responses that come with those debilitating conditions. One of my favorite verses is, is in Isaiah, it's chapter 40, verses 28 through 30. 31, I'm sorry, says, Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. So Simeon and Anna could have become impatient really easily. They could have given up on the Lord and the promises that he, he gave them. They could have gone about their day-to-day -day life, but that's not what they did. They could have become angry, bitter, frustrated, confused, worried, but that's not what they did. And this is a reflection of the faithfulness of God and of their faithfulness to God. Simeon and Anna believed in God. 
And because they were because they believed, they were filled with strength. They were filled with hope. They were filled with joy, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So the first two chapters of Luke detail the time surrounding the birth of of Jesus, the Messiah, and they help us see the length that God goes to show his love to his people. He left his heavenly throne to be born of a virgin, to walk the earth, to unite nations, to provide atonement, and to give us the gift of eternal life. But also in these chapters, we see worship and we see praise a lot. Anna never left the temple. She never stopped worshiping. She never stopped praising God. Simeon holds the baby Jesus and just starts belting out in a solo in the middle uh, of, of a temple. Last week at, at Forsyth, we talked about this heavenly host who joined this angel at the birth of Jesus, and they just sang out the song, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth. We see Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, as soon as his mouth was open, he sang this, this song, praising God. We see the mother of Mary, who sings a song called the Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God. There is a clear emphasis in Scripture on worship and praise to God, especially here in the Gospel of Luke. And I love reading these songs in Luke one and Luke two, in Luke one and Luke two, because they are compulsive responses to who God is, what He has done, and what He promises He will do. There's no form to these songs. There's no outline. There's no specific time set aside on a certain day a week. There's no preparation. Maybe they wrote these songs. I don't know. Uh, or maybe it was just this, this compulsive response. But there's really no structure to it at all. It's just an outflow of praise and adoration for God. It's purely worship in spirit and in truth. And I must confess that sometimes when I go to church or when I worship, I don't make it about God. I make it about myself. I say things like, I'm not really feeling it today. You know, or, um, you know, maybe I don't like the songs or are the preachers kind of getting on my nerves or something like that. Uh, you know, we make it about us sometimes when we go to worship. Maybe we make excuses. No one else is really singing very loud, so I really don't think want to sing loud because I don't want everyone to, to hear me. Um, or maybe we say something like this, like, I'm not really in a good place spiritually right now, but when I get in a better place, then I'll go and I'll worship. When we approach worship with an inward focus or we approach it with, with conditions surrounding it, we're placing ourselves as more highly than we ought to. Maybe we want to fix ourselves before we, we present ourselves to God or our worship uh, to God, but worship is built on the fact that none of us are capable of fixing ourselves. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we believe in Jesus. That's why we follow Jesus, and that's why we worship. There's a word in scripture, it's, it's edification. It's not a word we use very often. And it means like um, improvement or, or getting better or, or, or learning, being more knowledgeable. But it's not from this self-improvement or self-search for knowledge. It has to do with the building up from other people. And if our worship is based on who we are and what we have done, then we cannot be edified, we cannot be improved. When we worship God for who he is, only then can we be improved and built up. Edification comes through worship. It's not a prerequisite for, or a qualification for worship. We don't have to fix ourselves. We can't fix ourselves before we approach God. So instead of qualifying ourselves for worship, we should know that we are qualified through the blood of Jesus. And our response to that qualification through the blood of Jesus is unhindered, unbridled worship. See, Simeon knew who this baby was. He was the savior of the world. He was going to unite nations, bring Gentiles in to the fold of God's people. And the only thing that he could do to respond was offer his praise to God. Anna, she knew who this child was. She praised God day and night before this baby was even born. Mary, did you know one of our favorite Christmas songs? Yes, she did, and she sang. The question is now, do you know who Jesus is? If you know who Jesus is, how can you keep from worshiping God, no matter what is going on in your life? Like I mentioned, the week between Christmas and, and New Year's is one of those in-between weeks. Many of us are pondering some, maybe some New Year's resolutions and thinking about changes we can make in, in our own life. So I'm, going, I'm here today to offer you two ideas to get started with. And hopefully you'll look at these two ideas 
and you'll make those part of your life for the year 2021. First one, wait on the Lord. You can wait on the Lord by spending more time in prayer, reading your Bible, open up, opening up the lines of communication between you and God. Trust in those promises, hope in those promises, have assurance in the salvation that he offers. So that's the first one, wait on the Lord. The second New Year's resolution that I offer is for you just to worship. Worship. Allow God to consume all aspects of your life. Everything. The good, the bad, the happy, the sad. Lay it all at his feet. Sing. Praise. Expressively respond to the love that God has shown you. Just wait on the Lord. Be patient in his promises and it will all be worth it. So worship. I don't know where you're at in your, in your spiritual life right now. It's not super important to me. What's super important to me is that we work together to try to get you to that next step. Whether it's uh, you need prayer requests, you need somebody to pray, pray with. Uh, maybe you have some Bible questions that, that have you confused. Maybe you're, you're ready to change or repent some, about something going on in your life. Maybe you need to be baptized. Maybe you're just looking for a church family. Whatever it is, John and I are here to help in any way that we can. Again, go to facoc.org, use the communications tab. Let us know any way that we can help you. One of the things that we do at Forsyth Church of Christ each week is we have communion. And it's been weird because it's a time when we come together. That's what communion is. It's about community coming together as the body of Christ. And when we're so isolated and and socially distance, and people are sick, it's, it's really hard to do. But just the thought of taking communion at the same time as people all over the world is a reassuring thought. And so we offer um, a, a prayer uh, online so that you can participate in that if, you, if you'd like to. So if you have your, your bread and, and your grape juice or your wine, then go ahead and grab that, and I'm going to say a prayer. We'll have a song so you can meditate while we take communion together. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for, for coming down here. Coming down here where things seem crazy and, and everything seems to just be falling apart. Lord, please help us to have the confidence to know that it is all in your hands. And as we're taking communion from different places all over the world, whether it's at Forsyth Church of Christ or inside our own homes, it helps to know that there are people everywhere doing the exact same thing. And we know um, that we can have an impact on this world through your power and through your love. And as we, as we take this communion this morning, it helps us to think about the life that Jesus lived, the life of, of perfection, of sinlessness, that we can never replicate, which is why we're so thankful that he did, that he came, and that he gave us hope for eternal life. Help us to think about the blood which represents life the life that we have eternal through this sacrifice. And as we do these things, help us to cast aside all of our worries, all of our fears, all of our anxiety, all the things that, that we struggle with that distract us from who you are, what you have done, and what you will do for us. We love you, Lord, and it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. For the Lord is a righteous God. Perfect in all of his ways, for the Lord is a righteous God, perfect and worthy of praise. And the righteous will see his holy face, washed in the blood, saved by his grace. Just he promises this special place right next to his heart, face to face. Blessed are all the pure in heart, for one day they shall see God. Blessed are. Precious in his sight they are, and the righteous will see his holy face, washed in the blood, saved by his grace, to the righteous.
Jesse promises this special place Right next to his heart face to face As the righteous will see his glory bars For one day they shall see God by his face To the righteous he promises this special place Right next to his heart face to face Just will see his holy face, washed in the blood, saved by his grace. To the righteous he promises this special place, right next to his heart, face to face. Right next to Thank you for an outstanding message, Daniel. I know that we can all relate to the idea of waiting and to the idea that God's blessing does eventually come. And I'm so thankful for that vivid example of Simeon and Anna. Uh, I'm really thankful for you as well. As Daniel said in the beginning, uh, never a year ago could we, we have imagined that we'd have spent most of this year connecting with you online. And so we're real thankful for that opportunity uh, we're very thankful that you continue to watch, that we have a good number of people who watch this, that, that we really never know who's watching. So we really love it when you say something in the, uh, in, in the comments because it lets us know that you're here and it lets other people know that you're here too. So it, it doesn't feel quite as, uh, uh, it feels like an experience that's not alone, but it's with others and it truly is. So we're thankful for your presence. We hope that as this year winds down and we start thinking about 2021, that we will begin to formulate some ideas about the best ways to go about a new year. And so be thinking about that. I know you probably already are. Uh, it's a, it's a, an unusual time even still. So we have a little light at the end of the tunnel. And so we hope and pray that uh, our nation continues to uh, proceed uh, and recover from coronavirus. Uh, we do want to pray for a lot of people who are struggling with coronavirus and, and other issues and problems and struggles in life. I want to close this out with a prayer and uh, ask you to, to pray with me. God, thank you for the great examples in Scripture we have that Daniel has presented a few of them to us this morning. And I pray that you will help us to really consider our willingness to wait and to expect your blessings and to know of your faithfulness. I know, Father, there are a lot of people that I know that are struggling with coronavirus, uh, who've lost their energy. Uh, we know of people who have passed from this life. And I pray, Father, not only for those, but for everyone who has a health struggle, who feels alone, who has some uh, mental struggles, uh, I pray, Father, for the people in our uh, city and in our world that are hurting, and I pray that they would know that you are there for them, that you are conscious of their pain and tears, that you love them deeply. I pray, Father, as your people, we will bring that love to the people around us who are hurting. And I pray, Father, as we end this year, of a, a year of struggles, a year of heartache, a year of uncertainty, that as we face a new year, that you will bring to us a renewal and a refreshing of our spirits, that we'll be just uh, more determined than ever to be your disciples, to follow you. And I pray, Father, if somebody's ending this year and they haven't yet said yes to Jesus, they haven't yet given their life to the Lord, I pray, Father, that they'll do that today, that they'll send us a message or get in touch, that they'll want to be baptized, that they'll want to make some changes in their life. I pray, Father, that 2021 will be a time of renewal and strength for the body of Christ all around the world. But mostly, I thank you for the people who are watching right now, who will watch later, 
And I pray, Father, that you will bless them just the way they need. In the name of Jesus. And if you agreed and prayed with me, then type amen or praise the Lord or, or whatever you feel moved to say. And we're really thankful again for your presence and your prayers, for your patience. And as we move into a new year, we just expect God's blessings to be more than we could have imagined. Thanks again. My soul magnifies.